So in this video, we are going to look at more measurements. But the difference with this is that these measurements are not uh, things that you can actually get from your lab equipment that you can measure with a lab equipment. But uh, these figures have to be derived uh, by uh, calculations and we call these uh, derived measurements. So the first derived measurement we are going to look at is the rate. And uh, this is actually defined by uh, the measure of how a physical quantity, how it changes over time. So it's actually physical quantity over time. And this physical quantity can vary from uh, a distance uh, someone travels. Uh, it can even be the number of times your heart beats. And with this, you will actually get uh, the rate of how distance travel over time. Change over time is actually called speed, which we'll look at uh, in greater detail later. Or even like heartbeats per minute. So you can see that the, the rate of how fast your heart beats. So you can actually have several different uh, physical quantities to measure using the rate. So one thing to note is you have to know the unit of these rates. So how you derive it is simply you take the unit of this physical quantity divide over the unit of the time. So in the case of the speed, uh, the unit of uh, the distance is actually meters or even kilometers. And the time will be or seconds or minutes or hours. So you get something like meter per second or kilometer per minute. So this is the unit of, uh, of speed. Or in the case of heartbeat, you can do a uh, number of beats per minute. So the rate of change or the rate of a heartbeat is actually a beats per minute or beats per hour, depending on what you're looking for. Now we will look uh, specifically into speed. So let's wrap this up. So speed is actually the rate of change of distance uh, with respect to time and the SI unit of uh, speed is actually meters per second and if you look carefully uh, this SI unit is actually made up of the SI unit of distance which is meters and the SI unit of time which is seconds. So how do we calculate speed again? So let's do an example. Let's say the average uh, uh, the the distance traveled by a train is uh, 4 kilometers and it took him 1 hour to travel that distance. So we want to find the average speed of that uh, train. So all you have to do is actually 4 divided by 1, 4 kilometers divided by 1 hour. So you get the answer 4 kilometers per hour. So what if you want to find it in terms of minute, uh, meters per minute? So you know that 4 kilometers is equal to 4,000 meters. You know that 1 hour equals to 60 minutes. So if you want to find it in meters per minute, all we have to do is take 4,000 divided by 60, which gives you something like 66.7 min uh, meters per minute. And if you want it in SI units, uh, which is meter per second, so again, we know 4 km is 4,000 meters. Uh, one hour is 60 times 60 seconds. So you just divide 4,000 divided by 3,006 and you get the answer, which is the speed of meters per second. So we now know that speed is uh, directly related to distance and time so do we know so if we have distance and time we can find speed so what if we have distance and speed can we find time so in fact because these three are related you can as long as uh, you have the right formula so time is actually distance divided by speed and speed oh and uh, distance is actually speed times time so uh, an easy way to remember this is to have this triangle and you have uh, distance at the top, speed 
and time. So speed, if you want to find speed, it's actually distance divided by time. So divide. If you want to find time, it's distance divided by speed. And if you want distance, it's actually speed times time. So this is an easy way for you to remember how to copy. Let's say we have this example here where a car wants to travel from A all the way to point D uh, following this path. Meaning from A to for the first part, he drove 10 kilometers within 5 minutes. He stopped for 30 seconds and then he drove for another 20 kilometers in 15 minutes. And I stopped for 2 minutes and then he drove another 200 meters within 60 seconds. So uh, what is the uh, average speed of his entire journey? And if you uh, notice, there are both um, different units in terms of meters and kilometers being used and seconds and minutes being used for, uh, for, for the time. So for this question, we are going to find out in SI units, what is the average speed? So for average speed, we need to look at the total time the total distance, the entire distance that he traveled divided by the total time it, 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 take, it took. So for distance, uh, the total distance we have uh, 10 kilometers but we want it in SI units which is meters so it's 10,000 meters plus 20,000 meters plus 200 and for total time we are looking at 5 minutes and SI units is seconds, so it's 5, five times 60 seconds plus a 30 second stop plus another 15 minutes, 15 times 60 plus another 2 minutes, which is 120 seconds and 60 seconds. So the average speed, average speed is let's do the math 30,200 divided by 330 1410 21.4 meters per second so this is the average speed uh, they took for the entire journey but uh, if you look at the average speed for each part of the journey, in this case, uh, 10 km by 5, which gives you 33.3 uh, .3 meters per second. And this one, the average speed would be 22.2 .2 meters per second. And 200 divided by 60, you get 3.33 meters per second. So you notice uh, if you cannot actually uh, add the 3 average speed up and divide by 3 to find the average and get this figure because you need to know that the average speed is traveled along different distances. <clears throat> so you can't actually work it out. You have to actually first calculate the total distance and then the total time and calculate that way. And you need to know that there are times where they stop as well. So these average speeds do not take into account the stopping time. So you actually have to add all of them up, add all of them up, and then divide together. So that's uh, average speed. So the last thing we're going to look at is density. Let's run this off again. So density is defined as mass per unit volume. And the SI unit again is made up of the SI unit of mass, which is kg, and the SI unit of volume, which is meter cube. Uh, but a lot of times you will see that uh, we are actually measuring in uh, grams per cm cube. Uh, one of the reasons of this is because uh, water, pure water, is usually is sometimes used as a reference point, and the density of uh, pure water at four degrees Celsius actually 1.0 grams per cm cube. So just like speed where you know density, uh, if you know uh, the mass and the volume you can find density. If you want to, uh, if you know the density and the volume you can find mass. So mass 
of uh, material or substance is actually the density T times the volume and the volume if you have uh, the density and the mass you can find as well is actually the mass divided by the density so again uh, just like speed you can have the triangle uh, where you have the volume and density below and you have the mass on top so mass is equals to volume times density density is mass divided by volume and uh, volume is a mass divided by density so one of the things uh, one of the reasons why you need to know uh, density is because uh, for example in liquids the lower density uh, the lower density uh, liquid will always float on the higher density liquid so for example oil oil has lower density than water so oil will always float on top of a uh, so you can also, uh, based on this, know whether an object uh, will actually float on water or sink into the water. So if this, the density is higher than, the, uh, than that of water, the object will technically sink into a flask of water if the density is higher. And if it's lower, then it will just float at the top. So, but a lot of times, uh, there may be trick questions to ask you uh, whether uh, a object will float and the box may be something that's filled with another uh, substance for example uh, a plastic box with all oil, oil filled inside so this is actually a box with oil inside so you are asked whether it will float on uh, water so what you have to do is actually you have to find out the total mass of both the water and the uh, of both the oil and the and the box and you have to find out the total it's total, total total volume of the box and the oil and then you find the, the average density and then with that average density you can then determine whether you will float or sink